Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you have not subscribed, I hope that you will do that now so that you don't miss any of our videos. I wanted to show you, we're basically gonna do um, a quick video each night for the rest for the week, showing you guys what we are having for dinner. Okay, so here's what we have going on. We've had a, we've had a, busy, a very busy long day. Huh, let me re-say that. We've had a busy long day. I've had a long work day. We had to go pick up a quick, very, very small grocery haul from a grocery, Walmart grocery pickup. Uh, I want it crystallized anyway. Crystal, crystallized. <laughs> crystallized, okay. Um, and we've had a lot going on. So we're just now getting home. We're gonna make a quick dinner. And my husband's unloading the dishwasher and loading the dishwasher back up after our long day. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you. So what we're doing here is, go ahead and add. You can add that, yeah. We've got some turkey here that I just grabbed on my Walmart grocery pickup order. Honestly, the majority of the order was um, a lot of vegetables. Uh, we're gonna make a super quick dinner. We were thinking about, I was gonna make spaghetti, but honestly, we are just running out of time and I need a really quick dinner idea. So here is what we're gonna do. Let me get this going. I've got olive oil in here. You could use you could use Italian sausage, you could use ground turkey like I'm doing, you could use ground beef, you could use ground chicken, whatever you want to use, okay? Olive oil, onion, and garlic. That's what's going here, okay, over a medium-ish high heat. And then what I'm gonna do is, I, so we do not have an Aldi here in San Antonio. Um, but when I go to Dallas, we go to Dallas very, pretty often, we have family there and, and other stuff there. So when I go, I love to hop into Aldi because they're all over the place up there and they have really great deals on many different things. Um, so I bought, these were like a dollar a piece and I gave them the choice of, we could either have red beans and rice or I have two of these dirty rice. I wanna, really, I think I paid 99 cents a piece for these, maybe even less than that. So we're gonna, they voted on this one. We're gonna take this and cook it with this turkey and make a complete one pot meal. Just something super, super easy. Yes, I know it's probably high in sodium. I cannot read this. Uh, 47 carbohydrates, not great. Uh, the sodium is, I'm not even seeing it on here, but I know it's somewhere. Um, sodium, 750 milligrams. I know that's not great, but this is gonna be a quick, easy dinner. And then we're gonna make a bag of the salad to go with it and we're gonna call it a night that's gonna be our supper um, we'll be back in just a little bit to show you how this turns out and just how easy and yummy it is and then we'll show you for the rest of the week the different things that we're having for dinner um, just to kind of give you some easy meal planning ideas over on my site crystalandcup.com for about 12 years I've shared meal planning uh, ideas recipes meal planning plans for the week for years and so so, it's loud and busy here so I will share a link to that as well below so that you can get some other meal plan inspiration but I know it's really helpful to see what people eat in a week uh, you know what kind of things they're serving their family so I thought this would be fun to do so there we go my husband's saying wrap it up he's always telling me wrap it up we got time on our side when I stayed on home Oh 
All right, we are back. Lenny and I have been working on, he's been working on dishes. I just did a vacuum of all the tiles down here, our kitchen and dining room, just so that all that's done when dinner's done. But it smells like dinner is done. We've also, um, we also have, I cut up or sliced up a loaf of Italian or French bread. I think French bread. Stuck it in the oven with some butter and garlic salt on it. Actually, what I did was I sprayed um, nonstick cook spray on the bread. Uh, I did the coconut spray from Trader Joe's. That's not the most ideal thing to do, but then I put um, garlic salt on that and that's gonna be our bread. So our bread's in the oven. I still need to put the salad together, but wanted to show you guys what dinner looks like. So look at this. We had to get a little crafty with a lid. My husband's like, don't film that lid on there. That's terrible. I don't have a lid large enough for this. I bought this at Ikea on one of my trips um, in the DFW area and uh, it didn't come with a lid. So there you have it. All right, this is, yeah, it is done. Look at how good that looks. And then, the, and then a different night, we can have the dirty rice one and do the same exact thing where we just use ground meat of some sort, turkey, beef, whatever, and call it a night. Honey? Is it good? Is it done? No, I'm just good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no. Really, Lenny? No, really? I love it. I really got swear. Mm. <laughs> oh mm. my word. I have to clown on you sometimes, right? Okay, not mm. funny. I'm gonna make my own plate. Jack, you wanna taste? Oh. Mm. Mm. Very good. Mm. You wanna taste from here? Very, very good. It's hot. Okay, I'll take the bean out. Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday. Yesterday, I showed you how to make the red beans and rice with the ground turkey. Um, we took a boxed thing and turned it into something awesome. Today, we are going to make chicken taco soup. It's like a healthier, lean version of taco soup using chicken, okay? So, let me show you really quickly what we have here. We're basically going to use chicken breasts. I'm actually gonna throw them in frozen. I've got three or four. I think I have four big chicken breasts in there that we're gonna throw in here. We're gonna do two cans of Rotel, okay? We're gonna do some taco seasoning, which um, I have a couple of these that I need to use up that came in a box of uh, like a dinner kit and I wrote taco on it so I wouldn't forget what it was. I need to use these up, so I'm gonna use one of these to go in here. Then we're gonna make some tomato. You can either use chicken broth or vegetable broth. You can use beef broth if you want to, but this is gonna be a chicken meal, so I don't know if you'll wanna do that. But I'm actually, I only have a teeny tiny bit in here, and I don't have any of my bouillon paste that's chicken or vegetable. I only have beef, so I'm just gonna go with this. I use this to make my rice, my Spanish rice. This is the tomato bouillon granules, so we're gonna use that. Um, we're gonna mix it with water. I've got four cups of water here that we're gonna mix it with. I'm gonna add in some little onion, dehydrated onions, and I'm gonna put in some garlic granules. You could do diced garlic fresh garlic, whatever. This has a little bit of garlic and onion in it, but I want more. And then we're gonna chop up this cabbage and that's what's gonna go in here and be like our tortillas. Let me show you just how easy this is to make. Ooh, I've got it going and it's getting pretty warm. So I have it on high for six hours. You could do low for eight hours. Um, I'm kind of getting a later start in the day to getting this going, so I've got it on high for six hours. All right, we're going to put in our chicken breast. You could totally use chicken thighs instead, as long as it's boneless, skinless, so that you don't have to dig that stuff out before you serve it. Um, you will be good to go. 
could do chicken tenders. I've done it with chicken tenders before. We're just gonna put these in here. And right now, as I'm getting dinner going in the slow cooker so that I don't have to have, um, so that I don't have to be dealing with frozen meat tomorrow night, I should honestly start thinking about what we wanna have and what we're gonna lay out. And honestly, um, oh, I guess I only have three, but that's okay. This will be enough because we're gonna shred it all up and it will make for plenty. You could add some other chicken pieces if you need to. All right, there's that. We're gonna pour in. So right, now, what I was saying is right now, I should start thinking about what I want for dinner tomorrow night. I'm just gonna leave half in here so that I can mix this in with it. So that ideally we can start um, taking out and defrosting whatever we wanna have for dinner tomorrow night. We can start defrosting it now, okay? So that we're not dealing with frozen meat again. So for four cups of water, um, you usually wanna do, what is it? They're all different. This one is one teaspoon for every, I believe it's cup of water, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. You make it the liking that you want to. I've already poured half the water in. I just wanted to make it a little easier to stir it up in here. Okay. And the other issue with these, with this particular brand is it's granules and it's not powdery. The powder kind tends to mix much easier and you don't have to have hot water to make it mix where the granules, this really isn't gonna mix up well until it's all heated as it gets hotter. Does that make sense? Um, Orrington Farms is a great powdered bouillon or I really like to use the paste these days, but I, I will use these other ones as well just whatever I can get, depending on the store that I'm shopping at. Okay, let me mix this up. If you want to add a little bit of, um, if you wanna add a little bit of ranch dry seasoning as well, you could totally do that, that's garlic. What is going on upstairs? These people that I live with, these children. I'm actually going to add in three more cups of water because I want this liquidy. Now remember, your chicken is going to release liquids while it's cooking and, look at that dog. And um, so this will get a little more brothy as it cooks on. Okay, we're gonna open up our cans of Rotel really quickly. And we do not have to drain these. You can just add them right in. If you want to add some beans to this, you certainly can. Actually, I might look for a can of black beans. Now, when we do that, it's not going to be as lean, um, but it will add more protein for sure. So you just kind of do what you want to do. If you do add beans, I highly encourage you to um, rinse them off so that you can get rid of some of that starchiness. Okay, so now we're gonna chop up this cabbage real quick. I'm holding, I'm gonna throw this away. I've put all my trash in it. My cans, my wrappers. Okay, let me find. My favorite knife for cutting stuff like cabbage is this knife. It's the knife that we bought at a grocery store at HEB. It's big and it's serrated and it cuts things like cabbage really, really well. Okay, so we want to chop this up and rinse it off before we use it. Now, one thing that you can do to get this um, off of here is take it and smash it down on the countertop. I'm not gonna do it here because I don't want my camera to fall. I'm gonna go over here and do it. You're gonna hear it. It did absolutely nothing. Okay, so pretend I didn't do that or you can pretend I did, whatever. I'm gonna move this over just a bit so that this can be the highlight of the show. And I'm 
gonna grab my colander, cause this is not clean yet. So we want to chop this up and rinse it off before we use it. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the outer layers that have, um, that are just, you know, like ragamuffin. Okay, we're gonna take those off. All right, now I'm going to begin to cut into this. This cabbage smells so cabbagey. Okay, if you cannot get this out by hitting it on the countertop, then just cut around it, okay? All right, this can go in the trash or go to your chickens or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna start breaking this up and putting it in here. And then we're gonna rinse it. And just remember, this is gonna shrivel up significantly while it's cooking. So, um, you won't, it, it won't be as full as it cooks. Okay. All right, let me rinse this real good. Rinse this and I'm gonna start adding it into the container and I'm gonna rinse some more. I don't think this part got rinsed super well. Okay, we're getting it all put in here. And actually, I think we're gonna be able to save this half to use for another night and maybe saute it on the stovetop, which sounds super yummy to me. Okay. So, okay, so here we go. Um, remember, this is going to cook down. It's totally gonna cook down, but I do want to kind of push some of this down in here if I can. Your chicken is gonna make more broth and juice as it's cooking. Okay. These pieces are gonna come apart as it's cooking. Just get it stirred up a bit. I wonder if I should just go ahead and cut up the rest of that. I think we've got enough in here. About three cups, roughly. Okay, if you wanna add some beans, add some beans. Okay, if you wanna add some beans, you can add those now. I would drain them and rinse them. We're gonna put the top on here. You can cook this for uh, eight to 10 hours on low or four to six hours on high. So here's the deal. I have, I've got a busy day. It is 1230 in the afternoon. I have, I still have three hours worth of meetings left. And then when I'm done, we're going to leave here about four o'clock, run to Costco. We have a huge Costco call that, haul that we have to do today. Um, getting like, I'm almost out of my rice that I buy in 50 pound bags. Um, there's a lot of things that we're almost out of that we haven't bought in a year that it's time to buy that stuff. Plus, it's time to buy dog food and other things. So it's gonna be a pretty big haul and it's gonna take a bit of time. We probably won't get home until seven o'clock from doing that. So I want for this to be ready to eat. It, it's not gonna be ready to eat before we leave, but when we walk back in the door, we're gonna have a late lunch right now. And then when we walk back in the door from our grocery shopping, I wanna be able to make a bowl of this and us eat. We'll shred the chicken and it'll be good to go. So I'll show you a picture of this and what it looks like when dinner is done um, and we're serving it up, but you can serve this with cilantro with some Greek yogurt on top or some sour cream. You can serve this with um, some cheese. If you wanna add tortilla chips, you can. I'm contemplating adding a can of black beans to this, rinsing them. I think I'm gonna, I hate to do it because it really, takes the, some of the leanness out of it because beans are starchy. 
but I'm thinking about it. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But there you go, that's how easy this is. I'll show you dinner when it's done and then we'll move on to Wednesday night's dinner. All right, I'm jumping back on here real quick. Guess what I did, guess what I did? I went ahead. Yep, I went ahead and I added the beans, okay? You can totally do it. Yes, it's gonna make it less lean, but that's okay. Add the beans if you wanna add the beans. It'll be great, okay. Hey guys, it is Crystal here, and it is a late night at the Lopez house, and I'm going to, I've got about seven pounds of hamburger meat that I need to cook up that are from our recent Costco haul, which I will link down below. It was an over $800 Costco haul. And one of the things that we grabbed while we were there was um, ground beef. I like to grab, I, I prefer their ground beef over Sam's ground beef. And I like to grab it every now and then, and we will use it. You guys know I like to use ground turkey, but I also will from time to time grab their ground beef. I like to cook it up and then portion it out in two cup increments and freeze it so that we have cooked taco meat. I turn it into taco meat. Did I say that? I don't think I said that. Um, I like to cook it up, portion it out, and then freeze it. And then that way I have pre-cooked meat ready to go. All I have to do is defrost and heat it up and we can use it for tacos or a casserole or nachos or soup or what have you, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And what you're gonna learn is, I'm gonna put this down. What you're going to learn is that it really doesn't take much more time at all to cook five, seven, 10 pounds of ground beef as it takes to cook a pound of ground beef. So to save time and to save money, because when you buy in bulk, it's gonna be cheaper. You're paying less per unit so less per pound, typically when you buy in bulk. So it makes sense to buy in large amounts and then you can either, sure, you could divvy it up and freeze it raw or go ahead, spend, I mean, this is gonna take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to cook all of this up and then group it in one cup or two cups or however much will feed your family. Put them in individual bags right on there that it is uh, taco meat or if you don't want to do it as taco meat and you just want to do it with regular traditional seasonings that you could then put that hamburger meat into anything other than a Tex-Mex dish, um, then you have meat ready to go. All you have to do is defrost it, heat it up, and you're done. So I'm going to leave a link below to a recipe that's over on my site from 10 years ago at crystalandcomp.com where I showed how to batch cook. At that time, I would batch cook like three pounds of hamburger meat um, at a time. And, um, but now like we're, you know, we have a bunch of big kids now. And I think at the time when I did that post, I had from like nine years down to, um, probably a newborn, a little bitty one, Matthew, who's now 12 was a little bitty. Um, so, you know, now I have two 15 year olds, twins are 15. Um, I have a 12 year old and then seven year old and five year old. So we have, did I tell you, did you know we have nine kids total? Some of them are grown and out of the house. Um, we are a large blended family, but I've been cooking for the masses for a long, long time. So all that to say, let me just show you really quickly. Look guys, it's like, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night. We've had a long, long day. I bought this meat yesterday on our Costco grocery haul and I have got to get it cooked because it, the best by date or the cook by date is today. So I've got to get this done. Um, but yeah, I'm like, you know, all worn out, end of the day. But you guys get it, we're moms here, right? We're doing the things that moms do. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn, we're gonna put it on about medium heat. Okay, I've got my food chopper here. I'll leave a link below to this as well. My meat chopper is what I call it. Okay, for hamburger meat, or for taco meat, this is what I always do. And honestly, most of my recipes where I'm cooking any sort of ground meat, they start the same way. We do olive oil. You can either cut up an onion 
or now remember I'm going to be cooking almost seven pounds in here so and ideally I like to use an electric skillet but I've got to order a new one I'm using these chopped onions that are dehydrated okay but you could use fresh onions for sure I'm gonna turn this up a little bit about a six actually Uh-oh, this garlic feels frozen. I guess uh, my fridge is too full. And when that when you get it too full, it'll start to freeze stuff. I guess because the air isn't circulating as well. I don't know. We're gonna get this heating up. I'm turning it up to about a seven for the moment. I'm gonna tell you again what I've told you guys before in case you haven't watched all my videos. I really prefer to do this kind of stuff in a big like nine by 13 size-ish uh, electric skillet because they're thick. So they're about, you know, they're thicker than a regular, thicker than a snicker, I'm just kidding. They're thicker than a regular skillet that goes on your stove, but they're bigger and longer. And so they're great for cooking large amounts of meat and you're chopping it up with the chopper and it doesn't go falling out everywhere like a traditional skillet would. But since my electric skillet's broken and I've got to get a new one and I haven't done that yet, this is my next best, next best option. And you'll notice when I get to chopping the meat up, it's not, well, it might fly out of here a little bit cause I do get a little carried away, but for the most part, it all stays confined right here. Okay. All right. So this is starting to cook up. You can smell the garlic, you can smell the onion, it smells amazing. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have this huge colander here. It's huge, my mother-in-law gave it to me. It, they had it from years ago when they ran a restaurant. I'm gonna put this in my sink with this bowl underneath it. The bowl will catch all of the grease so that it doesn't go down my drain. And then we'll be able to dump this back in here and, and be good to go. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Just gonna chop back over it real quick. If you don't want the tomatoes in your uh, meat, then don't put them in there. Okay, 
I'm gonna turn the heat off. Just clean up my mess a bit. And then once this is cooled off, we're gonna bag it up. So once your ground beef has had some time to cool, um, we are going to take some Ziploc bags. You can either do the quart size or, or I'm sorry, the half gallon size. Actually, you can do whatever size works for you. Um, I have done half gallon right now. All I have is gallon. So, um, but we're just going to write on here, taco meat, and you can put today's date or, uh, I will put the date. What? Okay, I'm gonna just use one of these. It holds my bag really well, usually. <laughs> and we're just gonna put our ground beef in there. That looks so good. So this would be enough for my family for a casserole. for a taco night and I'm just gonna fold it over to get the air out and then seal it up like I just did. And I'm gonna pop it in the freezer. It is truly that simple. Okay, there you have it. I've got three bags here full of taco meat, three dinners. It's gonna shave so much time off of my prep time for dinner on the nights that I use these. Super, super easy. We're gonna to toss these in the freezer. You can either toss them in the freezer flat like this or put them back like I had, which is where the meat's all down at the bottom. And as long as you have all the air out, then you can fold it over and just kind of put it in there like that. These don't take up much room at all in your freezer. I'm actually, I'll probably put one in the freezer in here in the house and then two of them out in the freezer um, in the garage. So in one of the freezers in the garage. So there you have it. Super, super easy. I will link to the recipe below that is the printable version of the recipe so that you can print this out and put it in your recipe binder or however you manage your, um, your recipes and organize them. And I will be back with a video that is, um, you know, more freezer cooking. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. I will be back with some more videos of freezer cooking and how to prep large amounts of meat uh, into the freezer that pre-cooked meat so that it makes dinner time super, super easy. All right, guys, y'all have a great rest of your night. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to Thursday night dinner. Seriously, I took a late shower, went and ran some late errands, pulled my hair on top of my head and it dried all crisp. You know how like your hair just dries kind of crispy? Anyway, all right, so, Thursday night dinner at our house includes a sheet pan dinner. These are all super easy recipes all week long. Okay, so I am kind of sort of winging it. Sheet pan dinners are not that hard to do. I know that I have some chicken that I need to use and what I don't use needs to be frozen. Some raw chicken, it's actually chicken thighs that we got at Costco. And I also know that um, I've got some produce, that, some fresh produce that needs to be used up or frozen. Um, I'm not going to freeze this broccoli and I really don't, the stuff that I'm going to use, I don't want to freeze. So that's the bottom line. Um, so we're going to preheat the oven. I did get, let me show you. Um, I did a Walmart grocery pickup order and I had seen someone else talking about these and how good they were. And I wanted to, it's, her channel is um, Moss Family TV, I think, is the name of it. I just found her. She was recommended one day when I had YouTube on, and so now I'm pretty sure I subscribed to her. But um, I, she had tried these in a grocery haul, and I wanted to try them because sheet pan dinners are easy. Like, you can use any seasoning that you have. Salt and pepper, lemon pepper is a popular one that I use, just regular lemon pepper seasoning. Um, or I will do rosemary. Like, let me show you lemon pepper, rosemary. So I'll do either of these and just put olive oil on my chicken and then either do rosemary on top of that or lemon pepper on top of that. So easy, so yummy, but these looked good so I wanted to try them. So it's the farmer's market uh, flavor 
and I'm assuming, I don't have my glasses, I'm assuming we're gonna do this the same way that we would do anything else. Yeah, you're just gonna use some oil. The oil helps to kind of coat whatever seasoning you're putting on there. And you do that seasoning on your meat and on your vegetables. So we're gonna do broccoli. We're gonna do this head of cabbage. Um, I'm gonna use up some of these mushrooms. Uh, I need about half of them for spaghetti sauce and then the other half I'm gonna use on this sheet pan dinner. Whoop. I have some zucchini that I need to use up. I bought a bunch of fresh zucchini. I'm gonna use half of it for my spaghetti noodles when we have spaghetti probably tomorrow. Um, and then the other part, a few more of these I'm gonna use for our sheet pan dinner. I've got the chicken thighs here. I have some leftover cabbage that I'm gonna put on a sheet pan. I've got these that I need to use up, these peppers. I've got some Brussels sprouts that need to be used up or frozen. And then I have two of these acorn squash that I bought um, that I'm gonna try. I know you're thinking, how many sheet pans are you gonna have? I will probably have three sheet pans going on. One for all the chicken and two for the vegetables. I have some small potatoes that I love to do, but I need dinner done fast. So potatoes take too long and I just don't have time for that tonight. So we're gonna use what we have here and get this going. Let me show you how I do it. Um, I have a lot of baking stones. I suggest, and I love them, but I do not use them for sheet pans, because, for sheet pan dinners, because, let me back up. I don't use them if I'm using oil with my sheet pan dinners, because that oil goes through the, um, if you have too much of it, it goes through the uh, stone, the stone is really porous, so. I keep feeling like somebody's walking in. Um, then your oven gets all smoky and uh, if you have too much oil, it just won't work. So I'm going to start with the chicken. Let me move my camera over here. Um, actually, I don't even need that yet. I'm gonna start with the chicken because it's gonna take the longest to cook. Excuse me while I move us along here. Um, let me do this. Okay, all right. So let me just move my veggies out of the way for the moment. Okay, and I like to line it with parchment paper. I buy parchment paper in bulk at Sam's or at Costco. This one came from Costco. The last one I had came from Sam's. This will last me a year and a half or more. It'll last a long time. So I've preheated my oven to 350. I might bump it up to 375. These have three to four thighs in them. I'm using chicken, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You can use whatever you want. Breast, thighs, bone on, skin on, quarters, wings, whatever you want to do. Does not matter. Okay. I'm going to do three of these. Okay. So that I have plenty. And then I will freeze the rest. Anything. These can be, you really got to pay attention to what you're doing here. Hey Nicholas, will you go put this in the freezer? So, I'll tell you, Costco's more expensive for buying chicken thighs and stuff, and I've, I've told you guys that. But what I do like is, if I freeze all of this, I don't have to portion it out. I can freeze it like this and then cut off what I need, knowing that each of these has three to four chicken thighs in it. Hey Nick, I need you to go put these uh, this chicken in the freezer outside. All right, let me get a fork. And let me just tell you, I am starving. We had a bit of a frustrating homeschool day, which happens. And 
I don't feel like it was the most productive homeschool day that we could have had. And then I had running around that I did afterwards. And, you know, such is life. That one had three. And I like to kind of open them up so that they are flattened out like that. Does that make sense? Instead of cooking them all folded over, flatten them out so that they cook evenly. This one has four in it. four in it as well so we ended up with quite a bit more but that's okay we'll have leftovers for lunch So I've taken the, the dinner is done. The chicken is absolutely delicious. Uh, it did not need this much seasoning on it. It did not have to be fully dredged. Uh, just to sprinkle it on would have been completely fine. But the picture honestly made it look like it was totally coated in it. So this is delicious. And then we've got our vegetables here. They are hot right out of the oven. Broccoli, cauliflower, and zucchini. I still have the... Um, oh, I still have the cabbage and such brussels sprouts in the oven the little kids aren't going to eat that so that doesn't matter and then we've got some bread i just took some i cut it up took olive oil and garlic and put it on there and uh baked it call it a day all right guys that is dinner it's delicious super easy i'll be back tomorrow night to show you what we're having tomorrow night as i promised you another super super easy dinner idea i feel like my glasses are crooked on top of my head Another super simple dinner idea is what I'm gonna share with you tonight. So I've shared with you what we're having all week long and here's what we're having tonight. All right, so these are, we're having brats and hot dogs. These are the brats that we bought last month during our grocery haul and they've been in the freezer. So I've had them out defrosting. They're totally defrosted. Um, we have hot dogs that we buy in bulk. I think these came from Costco. Um, the kids eat these for lunch. Often the little kids are really mostly the ones and then one teenager likes them for lunch as well. Um, this is what's left of them. We will grill some of these and then we will grill both of these. I know this is a lot, um, all of these hot dogs and these uh, brats, but we will probably take about five of these. All right, sorry there, the camera died and in the process of the camera dying, it looks like my husband's getting them prepped for the grill. Yes, it looks like we're gonna have a lot of brats here, but we will probably take five or six of them over to my in-laws so that they don't have to cook tonight or tomorrow night. And then we have the hot dogs as well. Also for our sides, we're going to do, I'm gonna do two cans of um, the baked beans and then sauerkraut is always awesome on top of your 
uh, bratwurst. So I will heat about half of this up on the stove. And then I also have some chips that I will uh, bring out for the kids. The kids are not going to want sauerkraut on their hot dog, um, but I'll have chips to have with their hot dog. So that will be good. And then let me just show you some of what we've been doing today in our homeschooling for the little kids. Um, <laughs> they were working on some of this. They abandoned some of it too. But we have these super, super cute farm animal pattern blocks that are over on the site. We had spaghetti for dinner last night and it stained the table. Um, these are uh, the farm themed, they're farm themed pattern blocks and um, they are super fun. So not only do the kids get to work with these cool pattern blocks, which is like a math, an early math skill, geometry skill, but also they get to add up how many of, I made these by the way, <laughs> how many of um, each shape is used to make the animal. And then they can trace as well to do their handwriting practice or vocabulary or spelling, however you wanna slice it, early reading, but it's handwriting practice for each, um, for each animal, they get to trace that. Somebody started working on this and stopped. Um, my five-year-old and seven-year-old do these. So we've got sheep, looks like we have two sheep. Goat, oh look, they just left that here. Um, oh, Jack was working on this. He gets carried away with his markers. Uh, this one is the cat, I think. What else do we have over here? Um, this is a horse, a donkey, we have all kinds. And this is all just a farm animal theme. Um, I also have a I have multiple themes over on my site, crystalandcomp.com. Um, I've got an you know ocean theme. I've got different holiday themes. We just did a fall theme. Um, I mean, I probably have 10 to 15 different packs, a Cinco de Mayo, like Easter, all kinds. So if you hop over there and look for pattern blocks, just do a search for pattern blocks, it will pull up all the different ones that we have. Um, but they're free to download. I'll leave a link below to these farm animal ones. They're super fun. All right, I will show you dinner as soon as it's done. Try my best to move on 